Welcome in everyone. I want to show you today kind of the basic process of how I put together these Rust EFI breakout boards. So the cool thing is Rust EFI makes dozens of these breakout boards for factory ECU connectors. And there are all different types, models from Honda, Nissan, Toyota, BMW, you kind of name it, uh, Rust EFI has them. And I'm going to kind of show you how I start the process putting these together and solder them up and maybe why you'd want one for your own project. I got a lot of interest in this when I built the unit for my 5V ZFE. This one is going to be going on a 2U ZFE uh, V8 for a Lexus, um, but nonetheless many different Toyota models use this 122 pin connector. So why would you want the Rust EFI breakout board? And that for me is a pretty simple answer and that is when you solder on this connector it gives you two not just one but two breakouts and a number to reference and like a logical section of each of the plugs for uh, every pin on the board so it's actually really easy once you get these soldered up if the numerical outputs of the pins just line up here and uh, it's really easy to go through just row by row and make sure you have all your connections in. The other thing that's really nice is there are two. And you may wonder like why is that so important? Well when you're doing a breakout board for like a factory ECU there may be multiple uh, inputs or outputs or power that you need to share. So uh, you know if you want to tap into multiple things on this board that go through the stock harness this is really nice to have and i actually plan on using more of that on this harness to come so i will put a link in the description for the russ efi breakout boards and you can go take a look the place that i found them and they also sell the connector with it is on ebay uh, they have a really well organized ebay store and you can go ahead and go get yours yourself I just want to give a special thanks to Russ EFI for reaching out to me about this project and sending this connector set out to me at no charge. So thanks again, Russ EFI. You guys are awesome, and we look forward to doing more projects with your products here. So first thing I want to do is stick these together. Now, sometimes you have to be careful. These pins can just be slightly, slightly off just a little bit from just transit or just bumping around, whatever that might be. Just be careful, if one of them is really bent, go through and, and straighten it up before you, you're gonna go do this uh, soldering operation. So, um, this board, I believe, is meant to have three screws across the top of it. I don't have the screws for that, but that's gonna be just fine because what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a little bit of pressure on this, get it lined up, I've actually got just a uh, aluminum shock uh, mount here, and we're just going to line it up, get it as close as we can, make sure everything is looking good, and then we're going to solder it up just to get it started. And then once there's a few that are started, it will be uh, totally fine. So we're going to fire up the soldering iron here. It doesn't take very long to get up to temperature here and make sure that it's all good to go. What I like to do, at least that I've been taught from my friends that do a lot more electronics than myself, um, is starting in the corner. So if you go each corner, that will tie in the board, and then from there you can work in uh, rows or columns um, back and forth. So let's go ahead and let's just go to pin number one here. And what you're trying to do is just put the heat on the pad and the pin until it gets hot enough and then you feed it the solder just like that and you want to make sure that the solder is uh, is nice and flowed in there uh, you can check on the back side if you come over here you can see that the solder has indeed come through the back it doesn't need a ton you can actually feed this and it will like the solder will feed up the pin quite a bit. So do a couple and then check uh, your work and just see kind of where you're at 
and how much solder it seems like it's needing to take and then from there you can uh, you can try changing up the method too if you need to so let's just go kind of cross pattern in the opposite we're going over to pin 122 so this is the last last pin on the board like I said go to the pin and the plate feed it in once you see that this the solder uh, you'll kind of notice where the 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 core of the solder is actually a flux and you'll see it start to weep out and and then uh, and suck up on the pin and then there we go so it's actually already pretty much way easier to handle now I'm just gonna do the other corners real quick and then I won't bore you with doing 122 different pins but I just want to give you like a quick overview of these and show you kind of how I use them and uh, why you'd want to use them for your projects yourself um, so yeah just tie in the corners just like that and then if you want you could go ahead and do a couple in the middle but even moving at a good pace this doesn't it doesn't take too long but it would be uh, quite a long video even if I strung it out to uh, do all of those but basically that's it you just check the backside I can see that solder has come up probably putting in even just like a little bit too much solder in some of these but these are all gonna be important connections and I do not want them to have a weak solder connection so uh, we're just gonna go ahead and uh, finish up all these and then in a future video I'll show you how I break this out to the ECU we've actually got it right here uh, that this is another item that Rust EFI has sent over. This is the UA EFI. And we could solder directly from some of these connections to the board, but instead to make this more universal so it can be switched over to different uh, vehicles, we're gonna put a Deutsch connector, uh, like a big 12 pin Deutsch connector on a couple sides of this. And then from that Deutsch connector, we'll make another Deutsch connector end that goes onto the Russ EFI. So anyway, Hope that uh, is enjoyable to you guys. I'm really excited on working with this stuff. Uh, it's been a while since I've done something this hands-on and DIY, and I'll just bring you along for the ride. And thanks again to uh, Russ EFI for sending this out. Super awesome of them. And uh, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and make another adapter harness and show you how it works. So thanks again.